See back here in the trunk area we have a lot of problems with the body seams tearing and I didn't think about it too much before I thought it was just stuff moving around but actually the problem with that is the gas tanks mounted under here and all that weight shifting back and forth is probably what's tearing that up. The plan is to put a piece of angle iron across that doubles up on these gas tank mounts and then I'll just weld it right to the frame. I'm able to do this because the body is on solid body mounts anyway. So by tying in and making another cross brace I can actually cut this one up here out of the way to give myself some clearance to the three link bracket and it will then rigid mount the gas tank to the chassis and that should help fix that problem. I'll also end up patching the seams and even reinforcing it a little bit across the top just to be extra safe and fill the holes because it'd be nice to keep it clean back here. Another thing is, is it couldn't fit a full size spare tire in here anyway and a couple years ago I had the battery mounted back here. My plan is to go with a lightweight battery up front because otherwise they end up with there was like 12 pounds of just wire front to back which is kind of silly so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out bigger and I'm gonna mount the spare a full-size spare tire in the trunk so that I can actually close the deck lid now in order to do that for a full-size spare tire I need to drop 10 inches below the floor which is actually going to be right around even with the bottom of the gas tank. It might actually still be up higher a little bit by an inch or two. So to do that, I'm going to take a design from some of the guys that do wheel tubs with trailer fenders. Except I'm just going to use it to mount my spare tire. It'll be big enough to have extra room for it to sit down in there. I will have to use two fenders and cut it to widen it out so the tire will actually slip down in there. I got fenders with the side plates. That way I can seal it all back into the trunk area. And since I only need to go down 10 inches, these are actually 15 inches tall on the side, so I'll actually cut some of this stuff off the top. It's all 16 gauge. It should be at least a little bit thicker than what the trunk is already right now. And by putting that extra dimension into the trunk floor it should help strengthen that area up. The nice part is being able to have the full size spare and maybe I'll look at trying to plan a space for like the jack and everything else to sit in there a lot nicer for when I'm uh, traveling on the road just driving the car not having the trailer and everything with. So I know I have about 16 inches from where I still have some clearance to the gas tank over to the frame rail. Problem is, is the frame rail comes in about two and a half, three inches up here towards the front. It's not such a big deal for the tire because the tire will be in an arc and we won't need all that room at the front. But if we're down 10 inches, that's going to be quite a bit. So I have a wheel that's an entire package that's around 26 inches tall. And from the top of the stock trunk floor, Here's about 16 inches, so with 10 drop, that comes out to 26. And that's got about an inch and three quarter of the trunk lid here that comes down. So we're gonna be, ugh, might be a quarter inch shy. So I might have to actually move it down to like 11 inches deep just to make sure we're gonna clear the trunk lid. Or I could try to use one of these cavities here to set it up. The other thing is I have the jack here and I was looking at, it actually also happens to be 26 inches long, which means that I can do the wider recess because I only need 20 or I only need 12 inches wide for the wheel and tire. And if I stick the small end down and I stand the jack up this way, I actually should be able to tuck it in 
right here into this extra space that will be over by the side of the frame and stand the jack up and have it end up right up here as well. So I'll have to pay attention to where the deck lid's going to come out because it's going to stick down from the seal a bit. So I might have to go down to 11 inches deep. But I can check the measurements on that again, but it's looking good for being able to make a setup that holds a full-size spare tire and the jack. And actually, there's really no reason to have to stand the jack up all the way either, if that's going to cause a problem. So I was thinking something like this, it's going to be an additional few inches deeper than that, but with the flat of the jack, that's actually going to push it up a in couple inches. So that, I can tell right now that that's probably not going to work so well. But we can always lay it down. Maybe not that way. Maybe it takes up a little bit of room in the other direction. Can figure something out in here. Like I said, we're sitting on the, the floor piece here right now, and I know that that will be cleared out if I go to the maximum width on the recess, and then maybe I just need to build some kind of bracket to hold this, or I just don't bother putting it in the wheel well whatsoever. So I'm gonna think about that a little bit more. I decided I'm just going to do the full 16 inches and anything I got to trim later on to kind of form fit it, I'll worry about then. Uh, I know it'll be more than wide enough for the tire because like I said, it only needs 12. So I'm just going to have the extra space that's kind of like a sump area for storage or like I said, maybe I'll get the jack in there. Let's try it and see how it comes out because if I put the tire to the inboard side towards the center of the car, it sure looks like I'll have extra space where there's a little bump in the trunk. So I just went and found this block of wood. It happened to be just shy of eight inches. So I stick it down and I can run my scribe line across it and I'm coming out like within a sixteenth of an eighth or eight inches. So I just ran it and I kept scribing as I moved it around, keeping it pushed against this flat edge and I'm cutting the rounded lip off. And it'll do the same with the other fender, and then I'll be able to cut well the two together. Not the funnest tool to be using for this, but it's getting the most cut out of there compared to any other tool. But man, is it hell on the arms! We've gotten the old cross member bracket I made cut out of the way. We've got just a piece of angle iron here that we're going to use. It had to get a little bit of a angle cut to it to kind of fit to the frame because the frame back here curves in kind of a weird direction. But other than that, I just went with angle iron so that I can put it up in here and reinforce the mounts for the fuel tank because as you saw, the one side is completely ripped loose and the other side is not far behind. So I'm just gonna get this set up in here where I can kinda just uh, tap and hammer it into shape. Probably gonna check uh, the top just to make sure that the side that's completely torn free can get lined up pretty close to where it was. And maybe I can check um, you check for a level with this too against another part of the chassis. But I mean, really, it's everything there's got a little bit of give. Obviously, it's been moving around a whole bunch, so I'm not too worried about having it absolutely perfect. But I want to try to make it as good as I can. And then once it's up in place, I'll try to mark where the holes are going to be. I obviously, you don't have to hit them perfect. I can oversize the hole a little bit because the fuel tank strap will have the hole in it 
That will then kind of sandwich everything together and hold the tank up. This will then become the new cross member for holding the spread of the chassis as far as cornering forces, especially because the Watts link will now be putting those forces in almost immediately next to this cross member. So that'll actually work out quite nice versus before they were up on top of the shock towers. Actually, I'm not gonna even bother checking from the top because as soon as I got it even kind of close, this uh, inch and a half angle actually lined up perfectly with the very bottom of these hangers on both sides. And hell, that's good enough for me. That'll provide a nice strong weld down the edge of this into the frame and we'll be good to go. But first, we gotta drill them holes. So I'll figure out how to mark them. Uh, clearly my guess on the holes was off because I'm pinched tight up against those. Um, I was looking at where this was positioned and I just guessed wrong on the hole position. So I had to pull it out and grind them bigger so that the bolt can start straight in there. Um, I don't know, it'll still be fine. I mean, it's just nice to know that actually this will fit on just the regular inch and a half by inch and a half. So I got that right. I just didn't remember and follow through on that. But it should still work out okay because the gas tank strap is significantly larger than that. And this hole is larger anyway, and it's a slip um, nut that didn't slide around and stuff back there. So um, either way, this will be way better than it flopping around on the rusted out trunk. So it becomes really busy in these races with those kind of things. Well, that whole plan went to crap. I ended up hitting the frame super bad up here because I didn't factor in how far the gas tank stuck out from its mount. So I actually lost like four and a half inches off of this side, which made me have to narrow everything up and it was still hitting the frame up here. And I'm probably just gonna end up cutting it down and the wheel tub area that's left will just be what the tire fits in. I also had to cut it, notch it, and bend it in on both sides because it was too long for sitting in the frame. Which, I had a support added in here that I had to notch back a little bit and cut a little extra floor out. And then up here, even got to the point where I had to hammer in this section of frame a little bit in order to get it to clear. And then where the yellow dots are up there is where I intend to have it all match up again. So I'll have to grind away the paint and stuff so that I have something good to weld to. And then figure out how to reattach the sides here because as you can see, the layers are separating and I'm gonna have to get all that tack back together because that was about the only thing solid left of the original floor, which has already been cut and repaired multiple times before. So you just need to get the body solid again back here using that wheel tub. Well, not everything goes to plan. I ended up having to cut it back and narrow up this wheel well area. I had to put patches in different places to cover up rusted out sections so that I could either cut it out completely or at least have something good to weld to inside the trunk area. I added this strip down along here. You can kind of see the seam. I ground it down a little bit. 
Then there was filling in some of the corners that got complicated up here and did that one and this one for a little bit of strength. All along here, the seam was separated and I tried to stitch it back together as well as I could. It's just, there's not a lot of really great material to get into here. I also added a wing onto the insert so that I can cover up where this was cut away to access that body bolt. And I'm going to be welding it up here on a good section of frame past where it's corroding. Mostly I'm just going to set it in. I'm going to try to weld as much as I can to strengthen it up and then we'll be putting a seam sealer around the rest of it. not a perfect fit but good enough for what we're trying to do here I'm just gonna be possibly needing to hammer some corners down and line things up and just uh, kind of stitch weld as I go because there's definitely like here I need to go down a little bit but it'll pull the back up and then this back edge here needs to be pulled back so I can weld across here but for the most part I just need to get the thing stitched in there and Alright, now I've got it welded in for the most part. There's a few spots where either the base metal underneath just wouldn't take a tack or had a little too much gap, like right here. There, But there's other spaces where a previous cut to get the other body bolt is just too wide now to actually patch up. So All this will be getting seam sealer. I mean, I'll even be putting it across on top of the welds. I'll probably grind it down just a little bit to kind of smooth it out, but... Otherwise there are spaces where it's just it gets into this crazy contour and like this original seam sealed split up here. You're just gonna worry about trying to fill in the holes and because otherwise it's I mean I got probably a solid I don't know 30 inches of weld all the way around this thing and I'm going into multiple panels. So it should really strengthen up what's back here and key thing was to make sure we can fit this full size spare. And of course we should trunk and move around. Uh, sometimes I eat this shit. <clears throat> That should work. Well, it's now a little more beat up than I was hoping, but the point is that it's functional and that's what I'm going for. If I was to redo this again, I'd do it quite a bit different. I'd probably do one fender and I'd just cut it down the middle, add a strip of sheet metal in there to space it. I'd only go for the 12 inches right off the bat and then have flat sheet metal to make up any of the sides that I would need. Ideally, if you're trying to do this, you could make a, just a drop-in piece with the trailer fender that's widened out, provided the floor's in good shape, but obviously mine was not, so we're here making it work as best I can. Here's the other side, which it's, you know, this is what it was doing all the way around, and 
I mean, this was just from the weight of the gas moving around in the gas tank because it's attached to the floor of the trunk. And it's just been tearing this open because this was not like this a few years ago when I put the roll cage in. And it just, it's been progressively getting worse and worse from stuff flexing around. But really after I thought about it, a lot of the weight shifting around back here that would be causing the body to flex is going to be from that gas tank being attached down there between going over bumps and taking high G little corners. I have some spots here where again, I had to cut open to get the body mounts. I'm gonna to try to patch some of those up either by welding a little bit or at least get them straightened out and seam sealer so that I don't have such sharp edges hanging around because you're gonna to need to be able to pack a bunch of stuff in here and haul it during autocross week and I'll probably try to seal up where the roll cages pass through as well just so it doesn't end up being as dirty and dusty nasty in here as you can see. So I got most of the bad stuff cut out here. I decided to go back far enough to try to get a good actual still solid chunk for most of it and then I'll take some cardboard, mock up a sheet that I can then fold and hammer or whatever, get the right size that I'm looking for, and then cut it out of sheet metal and get it fit. It ain't gonna be pretty, but just like the other side, I need the stuff to actually fit. Back here, I'm just gonna kinda push this down. I'm gonna re-weld the base layer and then the top layer here and the rest of it will just kind of hammer down and hit it with seam sealer and that should take care of this side and put some strength back in the floor. Oh, and I cleaned up along here. I'm probably going to drill a few holes so I can uh, spot weld it along here to tie that all back in. That should do quite a bit more as well. All right, got the plate in there. By the time I got it beat up enough to kind of take shape, it I mean, it looks beat up, but... It's in there, I replaced most of the bad stuff. I put seam sealer on to get everything sealed up. Once the stuff sets up and dries, I'll just shoot some paint on it. So I just cleaned out the gas tank. Uh, I need to pull the sending unit because the fuel gauge wasn't actually working. And I had some foam in here and it's all just been kind of tearing itself apart and being crappy for the last couple of years. So I wanted to get rid of all that. That is just a regular stock tank that I have been running. And that's why I've been running this Holly Hydromat. As you can see more of this foam. So I need to fix the arm. The sending units are cheap. Uh, I think the car originally came with just a two hose one, but there is this three hose drop in that's available. You can get a brand new one. That's part number. But anyway, a couple of uh, past sins were, as you can see, this vent valve. I had removed from the one that I had in the tank because I had hooked up the return line to that and then I was having excessive line pressure and creating too much fuel pressure at the injector and I didn't understand why and here it was because the valve was on there and the reason I kind of ended up foolishly doing that was because I thought the return line should be the second largest hose coming out of here. This time around, I'm going to actually leave that vent because I have had plenty of problems with it pushing liquid gas up out of the vent, especially, you know, after filling it up. I've had to have a catch tank in the trunk for that. Otherwise, it was just leaking out the back of the car. So I'm going to leave that vent in place this time, and I will hook it up to the smaller line. I'll just monitor my fuel pressure make sure that it's enough. If not, I can always just drop it back out, knock the thing off, switch hoses and go from there again but i'm hoping it'll fix my venting problem out of the fuel tank i will need to swap this holly hydromat over to it um, this thing has been like the best thing i could possibly do for as far as not being able to run the tank down very low i know without it and just running the factory style setup even with a bunch of foam in there i was basically fuel starving at two-thirds of a tank 
and with the Holly Hydromat, I can actually run it down to about a third of a tank before I get fuel starve problems going on on track. So, in order to swap this, it was just a matter of cutting the tube and then using this compression fitting. So I'll have to pull this off. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, I'll probably have to uh, get a new compression fitting, what do they call that piece? Um, ferrule, maybe? I don't know. The piece, in, the piece in the middle that actually crushes down, I'll have to get a different one of those. Uh, I'll probably just end up having to cut this to get the top off and then I can just grab a new compression fitting tomorrow at the parts store. But that's all I'll be doing as far as changing the fuel setup with the tank. Uh, I figured as long as I had the tank out, this was something I wanted to deal with, was having working fuel gauge again, especially for autocross week coming up this year. I'm not going to want to be risking any miscalculations between fuel stops. I'm going to want to take this back to the tank and mark the top so that I know where this needs to be angled for the hydromat to make sure that it's crossways in the tank. So with the sending unit drop down the tank, it's pretty easy to see that as long as I line it up with the hoses, the hydromat will be crosswise in there and that will give me maximum fuel intake or supply rather in corners. You want to make sure that you have this edge deburred. That way it's not going to catch anything when you're assembling the sleeve. I can get the top on and then this is the sleeve that needs to go on here real nice and then I can put the base on and I'm going to want to keep it pushed up as high as I can based on where I cut it and then we'll tighten it down I'm only going to snug it here right away because I will need to have this one tight and then I can rotate this so that it'll make my alignment on where this hydromat ends up. So that's going to be about where I want it to line up. As you can see, I'm struggling with this a little bit. I keep tightening the top one and the body wants to rotate some. However, I don't think that's going to be a problem because the way that compression fitting is, is it'll crush and then we can loosen it back up and re line it. So I'm gonna get it as tight as I feel like I need to go. And now it doesn't rotate anymore, but I can Loosen this up just a little bit and rotate it. Until we get it to line up the way I want. Now to get this in the tank, we'll need to put the O-ring on. She can just loop over the hydromat. also put this on a little bit earlier and of course I'm gonna make a problem for myself with the darn thing Alright, now with the O-ring on, you can put the lock ring onto the top. I need to fold this hydromat to get it into the tank opening because it's so much smaller. I 
as you can see, I didn't point it out before, but I got some of these pretty powerful magnets on there. That's so that once it settles in the tank, it'll kind of lock itself in place and not swish around. Get those in there. I'm trying to remember how the heck to do this. I think I gotta pull it up towards the float. It's all gotta kinda go in at once. There we go. So I'm lifting the it back up and the hydromat's kind of springing back out into place. So I'm going to want to get it lined up and then as I lower it down, it should, there it goes, it snaps right in, the magnets hit. Let the o-ring down, oh, there's the other magnet. Make sure that o-ring is sitting in its groove the way it's supposed to. And there's these tabs to kind of to locate it. And then I can get this lock ring turned it to where it will start to engage. Oh, there. I gotta, yeah, I gotta get the whole thing dropped in all the way first. Now you just need a hammer and a punch. Gotta get this started. You can see the lock ring edge is started over here. And I just want to try to get at least another one started. And there, I only got two, and this third one is not quite. There, now, oh, almost had it. There. Now all three of them are in there, and then I can just open this lock ring. And then once the tabs get to the stop, then pretty much there. Just have a little, few of them to kind of center it all up. There, until all three are touching the tabs, now this is locked down in place. If you're wondering what I've got going on here on both sides, uh, this is actually just to be an isolator between the trunk floor where the mount is and the tank itself, because otherwise they shake back and forth enough that it'll actually uh, rub through. And I know for the factory, there's uh, like a some type of isolator in there. I don't know what the heck the stuff was made out of, and I didn't care enough to bother searching for the exact stuff but this is basically just um sound insulation like a dynamat kind of stuff that i had laying around and as you can see it works pretty good for taking up that space and locking it in place without having everything shake around and vibrate against each other i might have to add another layer or at least uh, redo that side because of that cross mount that I'm adding is going to loosen up the strap a little bit. So we'll have to make up that difference. All right, just had, I'm just gonna put another layer of this uh, Dynamat headliner stuff on here because it's a nice like uh, 316, probably quarter inch thick here. And I know that it was only uh, eighth inch for my cross piece but the stuff squishes cuts easy with scissors it's got its own sticky back all I gotta do is have it fairly clean and I mean it's gonna end up sandwiched in there anyway so I'll just push it down and it'll stick So you can see on this side, there's actually this little shiny spot where it was already rubbing through. So. I 
This should take up any gap I have from that cross brace that'll help support the tank. And keep take from shaking around, shaking around because it's obviously width based as well a little bit, and actually this gets to where it's gonna pinch in there pretty tight, I think. So last thing we want is the gas tank shifting around a whole bunch more again, causing more problems. Alright, I'm about to stick the tank back in here. Got to be careful as putting it in. Uh, sometimes it helps if you're going to lift it with a jack or whatever there. Um, if you notice, I have this heat shielding on here. This is actually due to the exhaust tailpipe running right here. And it was actually causing a bunch of heat buildup in the tank when I was out in Colorado, so much so that it was expanding the gas enough that it was pushing it out of the, the vent, like really bad. So, I mean, I even had where I went to, I thought I had to put some gas in, I drove to the gas station, I couldn't put any gas in because the fuel in the tank was so hot and expanded so much, it was already still full, even after running a full session on track. So if you're doing this kind of stuff, especially at like a higher altitude, but I mean, I even, I noticed I was having some problems in hot days, kind of a thing there that this heat shielding, if you're running the cutlass tailpipes is definitely uh, something to think about. Or even if you're doing the Monte Carlo where the tailpipe might come down the side, that's gonna be an issue as well. <clears throat> so put the tank in, I'll have to pay attention to making sure I can get the ground and the signal hooked back up for the fuel sending unit. Probably not going to show you all that. There will just jump to me having the tank in, then we'll go over uh, remounting my fuel pump and filters and all that. Well, damn, I'm glad I rechecked my math when making that wheel tub. <laughs> it is pretty much touching in a couple of places, but gas tanks bolted in. It's in place, I'm gonna have to reroute my lines and keep them up tight against here to come over because that uh, third link mount is right in here somewhere. And then I no longer have room on the bottom of this area to mount my fuel pump and filters. So I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna move those to. They want them you know, below, at near the bottom of the tank. I was kind of thinking maybe there would have been some space here, but clearly not. Um, I don't know, I, I should have room like right here if I make another bracket that hangs down. That'll be behind the watts link. There's, you know, there's a whole hands with a room back here. You know, just mount them right here and then they should be fairly easy to access to, like pull the, pull the wheel off. Yeah, if I yank the wheel off and then everything's mounted right here, that should be nice and easy to access without having to crawl under the car as well. All right, here's how I laid out the fuel system. Got it kind of locked down with some clamps and just a rivet in through the sheet metal and then use some zip ties to make basically the same separators the same way that I do plug wires. So it'll be coming from the tank, coming across, staying behind the cross member so we're away from all the suspension movement. We'll just come down, got our pre-filter in through the pump and around to the post filter this is out here. I mean the tire should be out here, so I shouldn't have any problems with this I will check that again after the rear ends back in the car But this shouldn't be a problem and Where it's at to the back the wheel should end somewhere here, too But if I have to we can always pull them out back a little bit like that and for sure is gonna clear I could always get some different fittings that make more of a tighter turn here as well but working with what I got, um, this stuff's still loose because I haven't swapped this filter out yet. I got I had to order it. That one is brand new. So I might as well just start with a fresh fuel system this year. And then 
goes up, tucks behind, mounted again, and then up into the feed all the way up to the engine. Then coming back from the engine, or just going into our turn line, and that's just secured to head back to the tank. My vent line, hoping that my venting problems from the tank are sorted out, just comes up here to make a high point. It's probably six inches higher than the top of the tank. And I mounted this where it's kind of venting down like that. If I don't have any problems, this is a good good enough. If I do have problems, I wanted it to be easy so that I could hit put a connector in there and then run more line up into the up into the trunk or the fender if I gotta make a catch can or something like that. I'll wait and see if I'm gonna actually have a problem with that or if having that uh, vent valve on the inside of the tank from now on is going to fix the problem. Us also assuming that I won't have too much pressure on the return line and have to switch those around like I used to have them. If you like these videos and you want to keep following along, uh, go ahead and keep after the channel and checking it out because I'll be continuously putting videos up until the car build is done for the year and we'll be wanting to move on and start doing events. And I'll keep after a lot of that stuff. But uh, one of the next big things, the car is going to get a livery. Uh, we're doing a full wrap on the car. It will not be blue anymore. And beyond that, you have to just uh, wait and see. But I'm definitely going to have kind of a reveal video when we get to that point. I'm still about two weeks out on it going to get wrapped. But the uh, debut will be at the Motorhead Madness Show in Duluth, Minnesota at the deck on uh, March 18th and 19th. So that'll be the first time I'm going to show any pictures of the car. It'll be there to be seen by the public, anybody that shows up for that show. And I'll be around both days, Saturday and Sunday, to just uh, talk with people, answer questions, and all that kind of stuff.